also didn't get here tonight. So in addition to the news analysis, they have asked me to fill in uh, Apparently, there's going to be a whole there's going to be a whole bunch of weather out here, and then there's going to be over here in the middle is going to be some, and they say that later there's probably going to be some over here on this end too. <laughs> and also, for your auto automotive needs, they wanted me to remind you: buy here, pay here. Uh, although, as witnessed by what we've already heard this evening from the fine news team, the news is as changeable, as fast-breaking as the weather. But rather than direct analysis on what we already heard, I would, with your kind permission, like to pick up at least one more time what we were talking about the last several nights, having to do with the, an actual literal rhythm that is not normally taken into account, noticed, measured, perhaps even believed in if people heard about it, but running everything, rephrase it one more time, without which you personally, your cells, but you personally, your life, taking you being the minimal degree of existence that you find to be of any importance, all the way from you to this universe itself, without a certain rhythm, without rhythm, it would collapse from you to the other end. And there were a few areas that, in my rambling that we hit on that I wanted to try and expand your peering into thereof. <laughs> Obviously, our, I guess our the person in charge of rhetoric and grammar must be laying out with our meteorologist. <laughs> <clears throat> Several items having to do with people's ordinary life and rhythm in a way that's not normally taken into account. Uh, there's a continual attempt from all sorts of views, all the way from religion to science uh, to the arts, to account for not just civilization in general, but the subcategories of civilization, uh, just normally referred to as cultures. And I wanted to point out to you that although it can be pinpointed from other views, if they wanted to, for their own reason, they could pinpoint that certain cultures build up around a certain racial collection of people or a certain, God knows what else, certain kind of people who have been subjected to certain environmental conditions that a whole bunch of people have lived under the shadow of a semi-active volcano for 300 years. I'm just making this up. I never heard of this, but I'm sure that now I've done it, somebody will come up with it. And that has directly, no, nah, indirectly, subconsciously affected their art. And you can look at it, their art and then think about they've lived under a volcano and somebody with a beard and a degree said, that's what happened? And you think, well, yeah, who knows? What I wanted to point out was that homogene homogeneous cultures, that is, they seem alive and they seem to be held together. Of large numbers of people, enough for that to be identified as being a culture, what it amounts to is a group of people who are in sync, that there is a rhythm going on, and that is what is holding them together. And the reason I bring this up is we were touching on it last time, having to do with the breakup of what appears to be countries, nations, and et cetera. And I was trying to get you to consider that it could be that they become out of sync, that they lose the beat. Not that the people do it on purpose, not that the people are the ones involved with doing it, because if you believe that, you'd be in the same kind of sedan as one of the people mentioned in the news tonight, having to do with the relativity between what hormones think and what neurons think and their lack of ability to communicate. And there was a man mentioned that said that being in a position of thinking that the people, such as nations breaking apart, that the people did it, which I slipped up in a sense and said it verbally myself, would be the same way as a driver, a man in a car, suffering over a knocking valve, a knocking piston, just chattering of valve lifters, and complaining about the poor reception on the radio. 
Now, that's not just funny or silly, if you thought it was. That is the way life has to work. Because at the ordinary level, groups of people cannot start being absolutely, directly, plain, point-blank concerned over the health of the engine. That's why people get all upset about, my electric window's not working. But from another view, if you could see it, you'd think, well, my God, sir, can you hear the transmission? You'll be lucky to make it down the street. <laughs> Uh, I don't, this window won't go up. This window won't go up. I'm going to have to pull it up by hand. But back to what I was going to say. Besides nations, historically, I'm sure all of you have some knowledge of this. Historically, that would put Tallahassee. Well, no, that's all right. I'm starting to say that'd put, well, that's that'd put Tallahassee south of Austin, which won't fly. But. Historically, they attempt to explain, they attempt to analyze as, as the hobbies of the academics and ordinary intellectuals of why cultures break apart. The Roman Empire, not just politically speaking, but the culture itself, fell apart. One of the most common Western views of it is a breakdown in morality. And from other views, a changing of the religious guard from the old pagan religions into a monolithic idea as witnessed by Christianity. The cultures fall apart. The point being, as always, they're not supposed to, but the point being, it is simply open to continual, inexact, unending theorizing and discussion as to why cultures fall apart. I'm going to tell you why they fall apart. It was a rhythm that brought the people together, notwithstanding the fact they may be all the same race, the same color, the same height, uh, the same whatever you want to say. But then why does that explain how, you know, you can buy that. It makes sense at that level to say, well, it's obvious that they became a culture. They are, using the term I even use, the adjective, a homo, homogeneous, that they were. They're all the same color, the same race. And so it's natural that they would come together and form a culture. Well, that's great. And then you go, da 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 And you wait historically, a couple hundred years, a couple thousand years, and you turn to the same people and say, why did it fall apart? Of course, you're supposed to wait long enough to be dead, so that you don't, and they are too, so that you don't have to come back and say, wait a minute. You know, if green X-17 made this happen, then green X-17 is still extant over here, and if that was the cause of it, now why is it the cause of the destruction? What brought them together was not necessarily what was obvious any more than the main problem with your car may be that the electric windows do not work. What brought them together was a rhythm. And rhythms come and go. Because as all of you pointed out, you were right. Sometimes even the stacks rhythm section or the high, the Hodge Brothers, back when the high studio was in James Brown's band, every now and then they'll lose the beat. It just happens. Historically, cultures Finally, the beat just wears out. It's like the people got tired of dancing. Again, it's not that the people decided, and it's not the people any more than it's electric windows that you need to worry about in the car. If there's anything at all you need to worry about, it is certainly not the electric windows. It is the electrical system itself, and it would be even deeper than that. But it is a rhythm that brings what appears to be homoge homogeneous cultures together, large numbers of people. And again, it's the sly part. It's not that what everybody else believes is incorrect. Because you look at it, and there is absolutely no defense against an ordinary mind saying, well, I'll tell you what brought them together. The obvious being, I've already pointed out, they're all the same race, the same color. They look alike. They speak the same language. What do you expect? I mean, there's a, that's the making of a culture. True. But, again, you've got to look away. You've got to give two or 3,000 years. You've got to be dealing with a kind of mind that cuts everything up into apparently discrete pieces because you have to look away. That's your face. Will, well, they all fall apart. Why did they fall apart? And it wasn't because, well, suddenly half the people began to turn into another race just you know, overnight or just gradually. No, they didn't. What happened? There is a rhythm going on in certain places, and it ebbs and it flows. It just wears itself out in the same way I tried last time to give you an extreme example to start with, even though you can say that uh, farming, crop-producing areas become untenable 
and they can prove in a laboratory that they have worn out the nourishment, that the nutrients are no longer in the soil, and I give it to you more directly, the dirt loses its sense of rhythm. The dirt, the actual dirt, physical dirt, no longer has a rhythm to it, and it's gone, and you can't do anything with it. If, if you would buy that kind of story, then it's not that hard to go from dirt having rhythm to whole cultures being brought together and then dissipated, dispersed on the basis that they lost the beat. They're no longer in sync. A uh, couple of areas sort of in the same, between the extremes of real big and real little. Sanity. Sanity is the individuals being in sync with local reality. And I bring this up not for any sort of psychiatric revelations, but again, we're left, as always, with the ordinary world that no one can even come up with a definition of insanity. And the more that someone is an expert, the more someone has been certified a professional intellectual in the field, the less likely they are to put their name on the line of agreeing that there might be any real definition of sanity. We've been through that. That's still interesting. Or you should be able to catch something. In other words, find somebody that has no interest in psychiatry, a bricklayer down at a beer joint, and he'll tell you what insane is. Him and all his friends, they know exactly what it is. But go ask a psychiatrist what insanity is. A man who spent 12, 14 years <laughs> studying, and he's going to say, oh, <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm telling you what it is. Insanity is an in individual getting out of intellectual sync with local reality, the community, his local dirt. But the kind of definition and description we've used several times with the news of that there is a kind of local reality and then there is a universal, just to make a comparison. Where's the other two Great Lakes? Give me a break. Those other two weren't all that great anyway. Well, I don't want to drive everybody nuts, then. And? <laughs> so there. <laughs> Sanity, go back the other direction. Sanity is being in sync. And I don't mean that it's not just metaphorical for me to say intellectually in sync. Let me back up. It is that you are operating at the same rhythm as local reality. What would normally be your herd, the collective, your time and place, but your community. You are in sync rhythmically. Now let's get past the idea that even I use it to get us going, that it's metaphorical to say, well, you're out of sync intellectually. That's almost too metaphorical because even a, <coughs> a psychiatrist might go along with that, which won't do at all. It shows that, we're, it shows that we're on the wrong foot. It is not just metaphorical. It is not just saying that, well, you're intellectual out of sync because reality around here says, uh, for instance, that uh, when you physically die, you're dead. And so some guy says, oh, well, that's not true. My mother comes, she's been dead now for 20 years, but she comes literally, physically, she appears in person, and she visits me on Tuesdays and Thursdays in my kitchen after midnight. Not a spirit, she actually comes here. I mean, she sits down, oh, yes, I have to fix your food and she eats. <coughs> then anybody in that local reality would say, the man's insane. <laughs> and so an, even a psychiatrist or just ordinary Common sense people would say, well, in that sense, the person's out of sync intellectually because they've got delusions, which they could say is, a being, is an out of sync operation, a delusion to ordinary reality. And so in that sense, they are metaphorically out of sync because everyone else says reality is one thing, and this person's saying, no, it's not. So I was trying to get you past that once we've done it. It is literal. It is not metaphorical. That there is a rhythm going on, and in more ways then not only we've got time to go into, but there's no need to. It's any way you want to look around. There is a sense of reality right here in our time and place. Uh, for instance, if I'm making this too obscure, in the United States of America circa 1993, 
And it's much wider than that now because the whole world is becoming almost the whole world. But there is a sense of reality. Let's say Christian, Western civilized, United States, English speaking, etc., 1993, that there is a general consensus of what reality is. But what that is is a rhythm. Why do you think they measure brain waves? I didn't mean to say that. <laughs> Take that and forget that. <laughs> That's silly. <laughs> Even I went too far. There is a rhythm, and that is what reality is. That is what the collective sense of local reality is. And so to be sane, you are dancing to basically the same rhythm as the people around you. Now, hormonally, I mean, uh, neurally, you might say here and there otherwise, because I said Christian, United States, Western culture. I was trying to get you to look somewhere, because we all know the United States is certainly not Christian in some kind of exclusive sense, or it's certainly not one race, and certainly not one culture. And so what I'm saying is you could be Christian and be living next door, and you could be married to somebody who was Jewish or Buddhist. And so you could say, we're not exactly the same. But there is a basic rhythm that holds you all together, that hope maybe holds you and your marriage partner that could be of a different race or religion that holds you together. There is that rhythm, and it is that rhythm that turns this into an identifiable whether it's just self-identified, it's not up to us, a self-identifiable culture. It is a basic rhythm going on to which everyone is dancing. No matter, they can say, well, we're not exactly the same because my wife's Jewish and she's Chinese and I'm black and I'm Catholic. You can say that. It's obviously true. But there is still, if they're both sane, by everybody else's connotation, if they say that, then the basic rhythm that is holding all this together in this one area and creating a culture, a nation, then they are in agreement. They are in sync with that rhythm. And insanity is simply that an individual is not, and forget the metaphor, the rhythm that's driving him or her individually is no longer in sync or not in sync with local rhythm. That's insanity. Once you understand that, uh, also I might point out, I shouldn't say this, but I already said about EKGs, you know, they used to treat so-called mental illness with shock treatment, which changed temporarily, which would change. In a sense, they didn't call it this, but I'm, it's obvious enough of you know what I was about to point to. It changed the electrical rhythm, the electrical patterns going on in a person's brain, but they had to stop it. You don't hear why. <laughs> well, some of you can sort of guess, but I'm not going to put words on it, because if I do, then we've ruined it all. But anyway, they don't do that anymore. No, no, no. Unless, now we're going to have to talk. We're going to have to find something else. <laughs> A little something else. Let's get past then the kind of breakups and the drawings together of cultures and nations and individual insanity and et cetera. That which is normally called... Uh, mystical experience, without it, me referring in any sense to any particular religion or any particular kind. Mystical experience, uh, the hunger for mysticism, in the widest possible sense, right quick to start with, that is to try and think, to try and have some experience. Ordinary people call it all sorts of things, spiritual, emotional, and God knows what else. But some kind of experience outside the norm. What is that? It is the attempt, now listen, it is the attempt to intellectually get slightly out of sync with local reality, but not enough to be in sync. That's exactly what it is. On a cruder, much less efficient level, comparably speaking, is drugs, alcohol. It's the same thing. It's an attempt to temporarily get out of sync why else do people just generally drink? Uh, you know, they got all kinds of descriptions, which again will fly at that level. There's nothing wrong with it, but them saying, well, I do so and so. But what they're doing is affecting the brain waves. It's what drugs are. Some of them do it better for some people than others, and that's why some people are emphatic. Well, they call it addicted, but they're emphatic in their <laughs> They're emphatic in their choice. Oh, no. Oh, listen, alcohol is the greatest curse that's ever happened to man. What do you think of marijuana? 
Well, now that's something that we, that's something that the God sent us. That's natural. That's not like all these people bottling up that stuff to rot your brain. Alcohol, no, no. Marijuana is a gift of the God. So everybody. And if it's not that, it's religion. And if it's not religion, it's depression. So everybody, everybody, everybody's got something. All of that, all of that, in the widest sense, is a form. Is a as an attempt, albeit in that case fairly crude, comparatively speaking, is a kind of drive to mysticism, some kind of transcendental experience outside the ordinary. So stripping away all the rituals and the scientific and the um, spiritual and religious uh, icicles that are formed on that sort of thing, <laughs> if you can see on the base of what we're talking about, it is an individual's attempt to get slightly. I mean, there he is meditating. Torturing his body and perhaps taking drugs in conjunction, but trying to meditate on something, staring at a picture of a drawing of you know, Hindu gods in some kind of, well, we don't go what they're doing, but <laughs> what are they trying to do? The individual is trying to get slightly out of sync with his local reality, slightly, that is, not enough. To become insane, which we just got through covering. It's to get slightly, it's to get out of sync enough that he knows it. And he'll say, oh, you know, it's an experience, but not enough. They can look around and they don't come arrest him. Mm -hmm. They don't come lock you up or you don't feel like, uh-oh, I am going to be locked up. Which there is a built-in safety mechanism with fairly sane people to start with who get interested in so-called mysticism. That that is one of their constant concerns. Am I going too far? Am I going nuts? I began to have maybe not big time uh, moments of epiphany, but, you know, little bitty, you know, South Carolina type. <laughs> but still, am I going too far? And you know, they won't rush in the mirror or call a friend or say, you know, do I seem all right? Am I okay? It's one of their concerns because life makes it one of their concerns. All of the so-called exceptional, transcendental, spiritual, religious experiences that men, you know, the epiphanies, the enlightenments, it is that a person individually will just assume will accept their definition, their description as best they can do it later. And history is replete. They all strike a common note. What, what best they can describe, and the more valid they try to make their recollection, the more they will say, well, this is not exactly it, but this is how I can best remember it. And what they describe is, I was sort of insane, but not enough that I couldn't get back. What they're saying is, my thinking, I know they call it spiritual and religious, but what they're saying is, the brain, the rhythm at which I operate within local reality, in conjunction with everybody else, my rhythm got out of sync enough that I know it. And I seem to have had a part of it. It's not that I went nuts. We're not talking about ordinary insane now, so we change the subject. We're not talking about insanity, we're talking about mysticism. The feeling is, I contributed to this. I have been working for that. I have been torturing myself and meditating and reading books on this for 40 years. So they feel as though I am a part of this. But this enlightening experience, the satori, the ephemeral or the uh, epiphany, is that my brain, my thinking, got out of sync with local reality, but I was not insane because I was aware of it. I knew that, hey, this is not ordinary thinking. This is not ordinary thinking for me. This is not ordinary thinking for my time and place. And yet I did not go insane. I did not fall over a cliff and couldn't get back. I didn't have, I did not get out of sync so much that I was not aware that I was no longer in sync. I was aware I wasn't. But it was delightful. It was what I thought I wanted. But it's always referred to as, I went ahead and threw in the sort of slip of the tongue, the adjective ephemeral, passing, because it does not stay. Because if it did stay, they would be insane. And so the enlightenment, the epiphany, is always a fleeting moment. Mm -hmm. But they know that for a moment, for a minute, they don't even, it doesn't matter, trust me. You're safe in believing my description. It is a fleeting moment. 
But they know that for that moment, they were out of sync. And they feel as though they had a part of it. That is, that I didn't just one day walk down the street and suddenly go bonkers. That's something else. They feel as though I was slightly insane in a sense. That's not the term they would use. But I was out of sync, but not enough that I was not aware of it and not so far gone that I did not come back. And of course, they come back and then... Poetically speaking, the rest of their life, they normally wring their hands publicly. Like, God, if I could get that back. God, if I could have just stayed there. Which they don't really mean that. Because if they had stayed there and they were ordinary, they would now be classified as insane. And I don't mean just classified that it would be a conspiracy. They would be insane. Now, at least you think that was the end of it. Uh, I guess somebody, if they just walked in off the street and heard this kind of analysis, could say, well, wait a minute, you're talking about this kind of stuff here is mysticism. May I level with you and say, <laughs> oh, <laughs> Now, this, this, may I give another description? You gotta admit, I've about wrapped up so much there's not much left to describe. I wonder how I'll get out of this. Don't you don't you worry about that. I'll go and draw in some more lakes if it comes to that. Forgot Lake Pontchartrain. This kind of stuff, as opposed to mysticism, which has to be. That is a temporary getting out of sync with local reality, but yet not going so far as to become insane. Remember, which is the second part we talked about, and then mysticism is almost going insane, backing up to the second one, getting out of sync with local reality, the thinking of local reality, but then getting back. This sort of thing, as opposed to all of that, is more like this. It's an individual attempt to get in sync anew with something outside local reality. There is a difference. It's not an attempt to get out of sync, which is what many people, let's assume everybody that even would sit here and listen to this, that you have attempted that in some way. It's not an attempt to get out of sync any longer when you know how to do this in a direct, point-blank, efficient way without the unnecessary trappings. It's not an attempt to get out of sync with local thinking. It's an attempt to get in sync with something new. Now, even the would-be mystics I could hear this if they'd listen to all this and go, yeah, well, that's what we meant anyway, and it's not. Because they, are, they start all critical of local thinking. That's what makes everybody start out trying to find some sort of exceptional experience or transcendental moment of enlightenment or all of it is that they're critical of this, of local thinking. You've got to get past that. It's not that you're trying to get out of sync with this. It's you're trying to get in sync with something else. The something else is a rhythm beyond the local. Whereas ordinary mysticism, drugs, even when it's the uh, hallucinogenic that really seems to do something to people, to ordinary people, that they say, yes, it absolutely opened up my consciousness in a way that I'll never forget and blah, blah, blah. What they're still saying is, I got out of sync with local rhythm. Even though they can't do it anymore. But that's still their description of the high point of their intellectual conscious life. Was I got out, out of sync with local rhythm, local thought, local rhythm, but not enough that I went terminally, irreversibly insane. I got back. Oh, I wish I'd go back, though. <laughs> but this is more direct, and it's different. Once you understand, because you're not attempting. You're not critical. You're not attempting simply. You're not attempting. Can I drop the simple? I said it first. That wasn't an accident. This is not an attempt to simply. Now let's drop the simply. It's not an attempt to get out of sync with local rhythm, it's an attempt to get in sync with a non-local rhythm. 